The Beijing International Triathlon brought to you by Fung Tai, the beautiful gateway to Beijing, and BAIC Motor Group ORV. Welcome to China for the eighth edition of the Beijing International Triathlon, a chance for some of the world's very best to take on an amazing course and spend some time in one of the world's cultural capitals for one of the most unique races on any triathlete's calendar. We have a stacked professional field again this year, along with over a thousand age group athletes, greeted this weekend with perfect conditions for racing across the two days, culminating in the Olympic distance event right here in Fung Tai's Garden Expo Park. I'm Will McCloy, alongside me two-time world champion Emma Carney. And Emma, great conditions and a big field. We're going to see some fantastic athletes today. Yeah, I think today's race is going to be very interesting. It's one of those showcase events. We've got some uh, little twists to the course. At 5K on the run, they've got almost 300 steps to endure. So uh, be very interesting. And with the age groupers chasing them through the course, the uh, elites definitely have, uh, have to go fast. Yeah, I don't think any of the age group is going to catch the elites. It's a fantastic feel, but it is one of the unique elements of the Beijing Trail. You can see the age group is warming up. Plenty of smiles and plenty of our pros back again from all over the world. It's uh, something that I tried to put on my schedule all the way back in January. It's I put this, Escape from Alcatraz, and then I start trying to build around the rest of the season. This year I didn't think I was going to be able to come back because it was the same day as 70.3 World Championships, but then kind of last minute change and um, we were able to do it after all. You know, I love the culture. It's it's so different from, from you know, obviously what we experience over in Europe and it's nice just to experience something different and the people are always so welcoming and friendly and um, always so supportive out on the course, especially when we're running around um, in, the, in the garden here. Well, I always enjoy coming back here because it's one of those places, it's, um, there's so much culture and so much to experience and it's, there are some things coming from the United States, there are some things that are so familiar and then others that are just so foreign. And it's one of those trips that opens up your perspective. I think over the years, so many great athletes have passed through and done this race. So I'm like, it's very cool that I'm finally get to be here and do the race. I was actually supposed to be here last year, but I was injured, so I had to pull out. Um, so yeah, luckily I'm healthy now and I can race tomorrow. Well, when Flora Duffy is healthy, she's a big chance in any race, and there's no difference in this one there. She is talking to Mario Mola, three-time world champion, and those two will definitely be the favourites. There's Liam Ward, Sam Ward as well, the two brothers, New Zealand's national champion. Time now, though, to check in with a former winner here, Paula Findlay of Canada, who unfortunately picked up an injury but joins us from the dock. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Beijing International Triathlon. It's a beautiful morning here. The lake is clear and calm, and the weather's nice. It's sunny out. I'm not racing this year due to an injury, but I'm down here supporting and cheering for everyone. We're really excited about the new format this year, which is draft legal. So everyone will be on road bikes, able to draft. It'll really change the dynamics. Might suit the strong swimmers who are out of the water quickly. So yeah, we're really excited to see this go down. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks, Paula. Always an exciting day, this one, but a little bit different this time, Emma, too, with a drafting format instead of non-drafting, which it's always been. So that changes things a lot. It does. So drafting means the athletes can sit in each other's slipstream, makes the racing a lot quicker, a lot faster, and you can actually affect how other um, athletes ride the course. We've got people like Eric here who um, is much more favourable in a non-drafting format. So he'll be looking to have a really good swim to come out with the leaders. Yeah, it means you can share the workload around and that is very important. Say on the bike, you're probably using 30% less energy if you're sitting in someone's slipstream. Yeah, they say 30% easier if you're on the, in the slipstream and um, then of course it affects how you run. Absolutely it does. Let's have a look at the professional men's start list. Eric Lagerstrom, 2015 champ here. He's been here more than anyone else, but he's up against the three-time world champion, finished second in the world in 2019 in Mario Mola from Spain. Joe Malloy's back again from the US and Keegan Hurley as well. Uh, your two Americans, Sam and Liam Ward. The brothers will be hard to beat from New Zealand as well. In the women, a smaller start list, but Flora Duffy, two-time world champion herself, and she'll be pushed all the way by some fantastic swimmers. It's a very strong 
female swim group, that uh, that group of five. And Carolina Rutio, who's there along with Mario Mola, those two are, are partners and both very, very strong. There is Keegan Hurley, who's back for another crack. Uh, he's still part of the US Collegiate Program, who, in fact, Joe Malloy, who he's racing against, is the head of that program. So it's always useful uh, to race well in front of someone who can affect your future. There is Lucy Hall as well, getting ready for this one. I guess the swim is my strong suit. Like uh, I've got a bit more of a swim background. Um, I'm known to come quite high up out of the swim and I like to push on the pace quite a lot because that's a strength of mine. Uh, and this swim, there's obviously, um, it's quite a small field, but they're all really good swimmers, all the girls. I think actually the most important part of the race is going to be the kilometer transition. I think it's going to come down to that because there, there probably won't be that much separation because a lot of people in the field are good swimmers. And so again, I don't think a lot of people want to, to lead. And so I think it's going to be the transition that's going to separate because that's where you're going to have people not feeling well or that. So I think it's really going to come down to the transition. Having some ITU stars here, there for sure. I'd be shocked if they put on shoes. So that's going to be like a tense moment if I do decide to put on my shoes and they get a gap. And, you know, the, the entire thing is about getting on the bike and being with the group or at least not being behind the group. What is great is that we can put shoes on. So there is a little... Uh, I guess mini transition as we come out to put some sneakers on which will make the 1k run much more enjoyable um, and I guess the big decision is to whether take the wetsuit off there and carry it or to keep the wetsuit on while you're running and only take it off in T1. It will be very interesting to see what tactics each of the different competitors in the professional field take on. Let's have a look right now at the swim map and then a run into transition. It's a very unique part of this race. Emma, talk us through how the swim will go. It's nice flat water, so it should be a very quick one. So yeah, the swim is a 1500 metre course. Uh, there's, they dive off a pontoon, turn left, um, do a clockwise turn around a rectangular shape and then back onto land and then they've got a 1k run up to transition one which is uh, going to really mix things up a bit. It certainly is going to mix things up a bit and then tactics are going to play a really really important part in this one in terms of there's a I guess a mini transition as you come out of the water where you can decide to take your wetsuit off or keep it on or take your shoes off or keep them on and really anything can happen and I, I think we're going to see a few different options here. Well yeah the athletes might decide to take wetsuits off, leave them on, if you're running your wetsuit it's going to be harder to take off when you get to T1 so those little decisions are going to really change the, the way the, the end of the swim pans out. All right, the men are getting ready. It's difficult to take a wetsuit off no matter what the conditions are, let alone when the heart's beating. And here we go into the water, the men's professional field, world champions and Olympians among them. A nice clean start from everyone. These conditions really are absolutely perfect. Not a breath of wind here in Fung Tai and the water nice and glassy and we're going to see a really, really strong swim. Eric Lagerstrom, top of your screen there, he started really, really well. Uh, and a variety of strokes. You can always tell who the classical swimmers are versus who the triathlon swimmers are with maybe a little choppier stroke. Yeah, I think we're going to see Eric Lagerstrom really try and have a strong swim because he's going to want to break away and um, be clear of the good strong runners like a Mario Mola. So any advantage he can get in the water and try and build that up on the bike, he's going to try and want to do that. There is Lagerstrom. He's been in this water many, many times before. As we said, he won in 2015. He's very familiar with this course, although there are some changes as they make the first turn and head towards the, the first right-hand turn of four as the women head out and there is Flora Duffy and she really looks like she's got the race face on for this one because she hasn't tasted the tape in 12 months. Yeah, Flora is an athlete who, um, and I don't really, really think you can use the word comfortable in triathlon very much, but she is comfortable at the front of her race. She'll, she'll, she'll be looking to have a strong swim, like Eric is doing here in the men's, and she'll be wanting to be clearing out on the bike and getting herself a little bit of a buffer because with a 2019 ravaged injury season, she's not 100% fit on the run yet. There is Lagerstrom making the turn, and now he's on the, the long back straight, if you like, of the swim. That is the, the second of the right-hand turn, boys. Behind him, I think that's Hurley, perhaps, with Mola, who's caught up to uh, Malloy and Sam Ward as well. But quite congested, and you can tell the pace is on. There's Mola closest to us. And if there is a weak point in Mario Mola's um, sort of triumvirate, I guess, it's probably the swim. He doesn't come out towards the front of many swims, but he's run home plenty of races. Yeah, and you can see that um, being a little bit of a slower swimmer, you are going to get caught up on those turns, and we saw him sort of fight around that swim turn. So it's, uh, it's quite a difficult position for him to be in.
Let's get the women underway. It's a small professional field, but as we said, plenty of quality in it. And Flora Duffy looked like she got off really great there. There are some fantastic swimmers. We said that Lucy Hall is a renowned swimmer. Carolina Routier, who over the past sort of seven or eight years has probably set the standard in triathlon swimming. We're going to see a very fast swim. Yeah, you'd expect to see uh, Flora off the front, as, as we've said, and uh, Lucy Hall would be very much up the front there as well. Caroline Routier is a, is a strong swimmer, and um, Natalie from Australia, she'd, she would be expecting to come out towards the front. So that's pretty much the whole field. Yeah, it is pretty much the whole field, Nat Van Coven, and someone's put their head up there. I think that was Van Coven who didn't quite get the line to the opening boy ride, and that can happen to... Amateurs, age groupers, pros, yeah, when you put the head down and you've got to go quick. And I think um, with such a small field and with such strong swimmers, you've, you've got here a strong runners like a, a non-Stanford, who is actually quite vulnerable now because the field is so small, she needs to stay in contact. So Eric's powering away. That's, that's a massive lead. He really is powering away. Eric Lagerstrom, he's a good swimmer, but he's not renowned as someone who leads away. Last year we saw Henry Schumann do this, but we know how good he is, uh, and that was in front of a pack field, including Christian Blumenfeld, both Brownlee brothers. It was a huge field here in 2018, and Eric Lagstrom is doing a Henry Schumann as he rounds the, the third uh, right-hand turn. We head back now, though, to the women, and it's one line, and you know the pace is on in a swim when they're all um, sort of in one line. You do. Uh, well, anything, swim, bike or run, if they're uh, strung out, you know the pace is on. And uh, it, it does look like Flora's on the front there. And she's swimming really comfortably. She's not looking every stroke. You've got Lucy Hall on her tail just following her her feet. And uh, who's that in That's third? Van Coverton, I think, Coverton, the Australian, yes. the 27-year-old, who is in a good spot on Lucy Hall's very feet. Very good, very good. She's, she's doing a minimal amount of work. In the background, you can see the age groups have started their race as well. So these are They're finding the going a bit tougher. Well, the elites better keep going. <laughs> <laughs> One of the uh, the great aspects of this race, a little bit like Noosa, that you can race on the same course as the pros with the pros, even if you do see them disappear into the distance, which is exactly what everyone is doing to Eric Lagerstrom right now, who's really putting the hammer down in that swim. Well, I think Eric might be um, slightly fresher than the other athletes, maybe. These... Uh, most of the athletes in the pack have been doing the um, ITU series and they're a little bit towards the end of the season. So Eric might have uh, come out with fresh arms, fresh legs, and he might be looking to rip apart this field. Just as there's an advantage, obviously it's great to be at the front and this far in front, but just as there's an advantage in the bike with, with the drafting, there's also an advantage when you come uh, behind on someone's feet. And here comes Eric Lagerstrom leading out of the water. And he's got a, a huge lead, Eric Lagerstrom, and he's going to choose to take the wetsuit off. And I think he's going to put the shoes on, so he's going to do the full thing. That's quite risky because I would have thought that he would just need to nail this run, get on the bike, get into the most technical area on the bike so he can clear out, out of mind, out of sight, out of mind. But he's actually opted to take off the wetsuit, which is a bit of a slower transition before he's in transition. Mola, Ward, Hurley, Malloy coming out of the water and there's Liam Ward as well. So it's, it's been a field. bit tough and they're all deciding to take the wetsuit off to an extent. And they put are. the shoes on. Moles come with the shoes on. There is Lagerstrom leading out. And there behind him is Joe Malloy, who's decided to run barefoot. And you can see how much time he's made up. He was fifth out of the water. He's now in second. But Eric Lagerstrom has the shoes on. And traditionally, you can run faster with the shoes on. But the other question is, is that when a wetsuit loses all its excess water between the skin and the wetsuit material, it's more difficult to take off. So it might slow him when he gets to the bike. We shall see as it plays out. We head back to Flora Duffy leading still from Lucy Hall and Nat Van Coven. And uh, Carolina Routier is tacked on the back there. And I think Non Stanford, uh, well, she, what she needs to do is she needs to make sure she doesn't get lost in this swim and, and disappear off the back. And it's very hard to make time back. But if you can stay in this slipstream, and as you say, it's probably 20 or 30%, she can hang in. She needs to hang on, but she's got an advantage that there's a 1K run. And being the strongest runner in the field traditionally, she should be able to make up any little gains mm. on that run. Well, we can't see her in that shot. That there is Duffy, followed by Hall, followed by Van Coven, and followed by Routier. So somewhere to the left of screen is non-Stanford. I think we can see her there. Not too far back, probably only about five metres, but enough. She's still getting a little bit of a toe uh, as they turn to the right for the second last time. But yeah, the pace absolutely on in this one and Flora Duffy leading the way. She's had a very, very tough Last 12 months or so, Flora Duffy, at 32 years of age, two-time Olympian and two-time world champion, which is no mean feat. I've got one sitting right next to me. And there is Joe Malloy in the bare feet, running past the lined-up shoes of the transition, the mini transition, if you like, of all the age groupers. 
Have you ever seen the wetsuit over the shoulders like that? <laughs> no, I haven't. I'm um, <clears throat> quite impressed that he's actually decided to do that because it, it is an efficient way of running with a wetsuit because it's quite cumbersome, quite bulky. But uh, Joe Malloy seems to be running very well without his shoes. He absolutely is. Joe Malloy, 33 years of age, uh, 2016 world champion mixed team relay. The mixed team relay's come a long way since then. So he knows how to run quickly over short distances. But he's got the bare feet and he's caught Lagerstrom, who probably had 20 seconds on him out of the water. So a very, very strong run from Joe Malloy. We'll see if he can make it stick as we head back to the women. And Flora Duffy still leading from Hall and Van Coburn. And you can see more age groupers out there in the background. Some breaststroke already being employed, but <laughs> however you want to get through it, we thank everyone them. for being involved. And there is Duffy out of the water. Hall nearly lost the swim cap, but she still got it on from Van Coverden and Carolina Routier. And there's Non Stanford last of all. Non Stanford so. really has to finish off those last sort of 20 strokes and get herself out on the ground and start running. So we've got a runner keeping the wetsuit on. We've got all of the girls have put Routier. shoes on. Yeah, that, they have all put shoes on, I think. And Routier has decided to take her wetsuit off. So she's gone for the slower first option. And uh, Non really needs to, to get herself moving. This time it is Hall who's gone barefoot. And oh, she yes. leads out from Duffy, who's kept her wetsuit completely on but put her shoes on. So it's so good to see these different it tactics, is, isn't it? It is. And uh, I think Lucy would be just hoping that uh, she can get her wetsuit off quickly. She doesn't have to take her shoes off and she can do what these guys are doing and getting out of uh, the main T1 as fast as they can. Joe Malloy having a little bit of trouble there, but the other top three out. Let's have a look at the swim times for the men. Lagerstrom, 31 seconds faster than Sam Ward. Six seconds covering second through to sixth. Zhu Fang and Ivalov low are last of all. Lagerstrom losing his advantage there through T1 from Mola and Ward, who both ran well. And they did the same thing as Lagerstrom. And the trio, 30 seconds faster as Lucy Hall now comes into transition first. And she'll need to be quick if she's going to continue to have a little bit of an advantage there that she earned on that run. I think Lucy's main um, focus at the moment would be to get out on the bike, get herself settled, get herself into a good position and wait for Flora. Everyone knows Flora is going to ride hard. And I think Natalie would be just looking to, to chase on as well. There is Van Coverden, and on the other side of the bar is Stanford, who's run straight past Carolina Routier, and she'll need to tack onto the back of Flora Duffy. We all know how strong she is on the bike, and staying with Duffy is very important. There is Routier coming into transition, and it looks like Stanford might have missed the boat here. Yeah, she needs to really get herself moving. She needs to get on that train. She needs to get on those three girls in front, because there's absolutely no doubt Flora will be riding the fastest over this course. All right, she didn't have a great transition, Flora Duffy, but she did get out of the water first. Lucy Hall, she ran barefoot and did a four. 59. So those two together along with Van Coverden might just form a group of three. We'll take a break. We'll be back with the bike leg of the Beijing International Triathlon. Welcome back to the Beijing International Triathlon, a race which in its eight-year history has definitely become a destination event for the world's best, both for its amazing racing and for the cultural experience. The athletes arrive early in race week and this year took the trip to the Great Wall of China, which is a true bucket list item, as well as taking time to visit some of Greater Beijing's many shrines, markets and public spaces, getting a true sense of the rich history of this amazing city and experiencing firsthand the warmth and support of the locals. It's something that these athletes certainly don't often get the time to do. You can see all of them heading out and about and taking a few trinkets home as well, which is always important. But let's get back to the racing. It's a packed schedule over the weekend with the age group sprint race taking place on Saturday. A perfect way to experience triathlon for the first time and to take on parts of the professional course here in Beijing. Athletes of all abilities enjoying the beautiful surrounds of Garden Expo Park and crossing the line to be presented their medals as well by the pros. And that's another thing that doesn't happen usually in other races, but to cross the line and get your finishing medal from someone who has done everything in the world of triathlon is a special thrill. There's Carolina Routier hang, handing out a few, plenty of high fives and smiles as well. And excitement here as people finish their first triathlon or hit new personal bests. For the pros, it's time to take on the bike course though after a very quick swim. And the first part of this course is a little different to the second half. Wide boulevards as they come out of Garden Expo Park. Usually they take a TT bike here, but 
because of the rules, Emma, more road bikes this year. Yeah, with the rule change this year on the bike, it's gone into a uh, drafting format. You'll see the athletes are on road bikes. They're a lot more responsive, a lot safer to ride when you're riding closer to people. So it'll especially become important in these technical areas out the back of the course. Yeah, the advantage of having a more aero TT bike is negated somewhat by the rule change. That turnaround at the 20 kilometre mark is at the top of Qianling Mountain, which is uh, a very high climb up there, and then they come back down. The first chance they get to look at their competitors, take a left turn through some villages and back onto those boulevards, which have fantastic surfaces, and we'll see a very fast run into transition in the end. It's going to be a, a really, really interesting bike like this one. The biggest change for sure is moving the bike to a draft legal format. Uh, it's always been on draft, smallish field, and um, time trial bikes. So this year we're on road bikes, same size field for the most part, but um, yeah, we can all ride in a group and draft, and that just brings an entirely new uh, element of strategy, and it's really like almost, almost a different sport. And hopefully I'll be riding with a few others, which means it'll, like, you can share the workload uh, when you draft. Uh, but yeah, there's a, there's a couple of hills, a couple of spikes, and it's a little bit technical. So I think that'll, uh, that'll come into play in if someone's going to get dropped or, yeah, it, it's, it's going to be interesting. When you're looking at the map, you just think it's one, uh, one lap and it's going to be boring, but it's really not. It's actually a really, uh, really interesting, technical, fast parts. There's hills, you got, you know, the course is covering every, every single part of, of, a, of a good bike course. So. Um, really looking forward to it. Now, it's going to be a challenging bike, that's for sure, and we've got some uh, strong cyclists here, so that, and they'll make it tough, for that's for sure. The course is interesting. There's some long straights where you know you can really pick up some momentum, and um, it'll probably be really hard to break the group up at that point. Um, but the middle section of the course is very technical, quite hilly, uh, and I think that's probably where you're going to see some of the attacks being thrown down, and I wouldn't be surprised um, if that's where Flora really tries to make her move and get away. Some interesting insights. Let's get back into the racing and out on the bike. A Sam Ward of New Zealand there, just overtaken for the lead as they share it by Mario Mola, the three-time world champion, and Eric Lagerstrom of the USA. So as we suspected, a group of three have taken off the front. Lagerstrom led out of the water and a great swimmer was caught in the run up to T1. So we're seeing the drafting already out on, on these boulevards and we talked about the energy you can serve. It's about 30%. So these guys will be taking turns at the front and trying to make sure that they are the podium getters. Yeah, this group of three is going to work very hard to stay off the front. They've um, stuck Mario Mola, who's got the white shirt on the front of the group, so they're going to try and zap his leg so he's not so sharp on the run, which is what the girls are also doing with Flora. But the difference between the men's and the women's race is that Flora is probably the most outstanding cyclist in triathlon in the world at the moment, and these girls are just hanging on. They're not sticking around the front. Yeah, Natalie Van Coveden from Australia to the right of your screen. In the back there was Lucy Hall, and they're both on the wheel of Flora Duffy, which is a fantastic place to be. They would be thinking, though, they've got to hang on as much as possible, as you say, as opposed to these guys who are still sharing the load and trying to make sure they are the three that end up on the podium. But as you can see, they're cycling through and talking to each other. Yeah, I think you're going to see the, um, the women are hanging on to Flora, but the men are going to be rotating. I do think that they are going to make Mario Mola do a lot more work. Um, Eric is not a strong runner. He needs to um, make sure that everyone's done a little bit more work on the bike. And uh, using corners like this and using some technical areas, I think we're going to see Flora try and break these girls up. Yeah, the women certainly not attacking that corner as much as the men, and Mario Mola is the man that they're all going to be chasing at the back end. You would think three times he's been the world champion, finished second overall in 2019. Twice he's been off to the Olympics as well. There's not many guys who have done what Mario Mola has done in the last five years or so. And everyone racing today would know that Mario has set all those major wins up off a very strong run. And that will no doubt be in the minds of Sam Ward and Eric Lagerstrom. And maybe we'll see an attack in the mountains. Maybe we won't from, from one of these two men who are taking on Mola, knowing that they'll need a little bit more. And the same could definitely happen in, in this trio. I mean, if you're in this position, uh, as we're on board with Lucy Hall, knowing that you're going to have a, a 10 kilometres of uphill, at what point do you try and break this up or you just stay with Flora? I, I actually think the girls are going to be working with Flora. I know Natalie would be. Natalie's not um, an outstandingly strong cyclist and she would be looking to save her legs for the run. Um, and I, I think we saw there that Flora was getting a little bit annoyed with Lucy Hall. We'd only seen her sitting on the back and Flora has pushed her to the front. So they're all expected to work out there. 
Always a bit of a tenuous alliance. Everyone has to do their turn at the front, but it is about 30% harder to be at the front. So Mola at the moment is doing the work and tucked right in there is Lagerstrom as, uh, as Mola peels off. So they're working really well together, the men. They are working well together and uh, we have, we've got a car on the course. Yeah, that's the BARC Motor Group ORV sort of pace car, the official vehicle, uh, keeping pace with the athletes. And as is Nat Van Coven and Lucy Hall trying to do that, to Duffy, who's looking comfortable. Maybe Hall at the back, who looking the least comfortable of those three at the moment. Yeah, I think you can see Flora's got the um, ITU legal um, aero bars. And so she's actually in an aero position as much as she can be in a drafting race. And I think that's really a sensible thing to do. Um, she's obviously going to be quicker and she's always looking to break away. So she's she's got herself set up there for a fast bike. Yeah, the women had great cadence, plenty of power too. 40 to 45 kilometres an hour. It's great shots come from our motorbike of, of the group of women there and just only about 20 or 30 centimetres between wheels. You've got to get as close as possible with these guys. They get very, very close, don't they? They do. And I think we're in the part of the course where it's um, the technical area hasn't really cropped up yet. So um, you know, a strong cyclist like Flora, she's just going to power this section of the course. And then she's going to look when we hit the hilly sections and the very technical stuff around 30k mark, she's going to try and hit that hard and uh, really be superior over that section of the course. Yeah, the reigning Commonwealth Games gold medalist has had a foot injury as the, the men head into the mountains and this is where it all changes. Very narrow roads, lots of blind corners and plenty of up and down. So a completely different skill set required. The three women of the chase group, oh, not the chase group, sorry, the lead group. The chase group is non-Stanford and Carolina Routier and they are nowhere to be seen. But the lead group of women still out on the boulevards and trying to stick together. And if you were making that attack, I mean, for the men, they're probably around that time where they can start looking at who's got the strongest legs. Yeah, you can see as the men sort of entered this area, the, the corners suddenly start to tighten up. You can no longer pedal through the corners. You've got to take the correct lines. You've, you've got to navigate your way through sharper turns. And that really does start to break everyone up. You've got to be in the right gear. And if you're a really smart cyclist in this section of the course, you can actually hurt your, your competitors more than on the, the open sections. Yeah, the open section is about making sure you're tactically in a good position. Lucy Hall and Natalie Van Coverden are certainly that, but definitely Flora Duffy looks like she is the strongest of the three cyclists at the moment. And it's good to see her back after what's been a very, very difficult 12 months for her. And yep. we saw third in the World Cup in Banyolas, which is a World Cup in Spain that's around for the first year this year, but hasn't actually crossed the line first. She did have a great race in the Tokyo Test event, but she'll be looking for that first win as the men attack these very interesting and some of these roads actually have been built specifically for this event um, so you know how Beijing is really turning it on for these guys and Flora as you say looking much more aero you mentioned that the other two don't need to as much because they're, they're tucking in behind. Yeah, Flora's had an interesting season. She uh, was very dominant through the Commonwealth Games at the beginning of 2018. She won the next couple of um, WTS races. Then we didn't see her on the circuit for a year. She had a very complicated foot injury and is now starting to sort of get herself ready and looking towards Tokyo 2020. So uh, Flora's using all these races to get herself back there. She's certainly looking the goods at the moment, as are these three men who have completely gapped the rest of the men's professional field. There's five other athletes somewhere, but we haven't seen them anywhere. Here's the chase group for the women. The first time we've seen them out on the bike, non Stanford and Carolina Routier working hard together to try and bridge that gap. Three a little bit easier than two. Carolina's another one who's had her injury issue. She was hit by a car in April last year, out for 11 months and came back in February. Had a top 10 at home in Bagnola's um, in September. So she's coming back to form, but it's a long road. It is, and the girls are sitting up on their hoods. It doesn't look like they're having a really, really committed chase, which um, you really need to be chasing hard when you're chasing down a group with Flora Duffy in there. Three men working hard as they approach the halfway point of the bike, which is the top of Qianling Mountain here in southwest Beijing. And it is a long haul to the top, and it just gets more and more steep as into the hills goes Routier in the back of Stanford there as well. So 2013 world champ Stanford. She's finally found some form this year, but she's got a lot of work to do. She changed training groups in the last 12 months. She won in Hamburg in the WTS, which her first WTS win in three years. So she does have some form, as do these three men who have been stuck together like glue the entire time. And there is Van Coverden, and it looks like she has been dropped by that group. She has. It's um, quite a 
a massive difference now, the uh, the gap between her and the, the two girls off the front. So Natalie's sort of in no, no man's land now and she's got to ride this technical course and just uh, basically ride flat out. You were right in that the, both Hall and, and Van Coverden were trying to hang on to the back. So Hall has managed it, we think. Van Coverden not so much as Ward, the New Zealand triathlon champion this year. Amongst a good group like Hayden Wilde and Taylor Reid uh, managed that one. He peels off to the back, but at the front and doing all the work pretty much all day on the bike is Flora Duffy and Hall is still stuck to her and not, not taking her turns, but that doesn't matter. She's still there. I think Flora might be at the stage where she's thinking that she can um, outrun Lucy, Lucy Hall. Um, Lucy's normally a, very much a swim expert and I think Flora just wants to now ride fast. She started to drop people and um, get into T2. Very strong of Lucy Hall to hang on to the back wheel though and, and she has done some of the time at the front and knows that they can put more time into Van Coburn and now it'll be a shootout for the win as the top of the hill and the 20 kilometre mark highest point on the course come the men. Lagerstrom, Ward and Moller and they'll get a look at how far back the chases are. We haven't seen them pretty much all day. And there is Keegan Hurley and Liam Ward. So there are our chases. They're heading up and the men will come down in just a second. And it's pretty demoralising when you're grinding to get to the top of the hill to see the leaders just shoot down past you. And especially as they're coming off the far section of the course and it's going to blow out or the, the visual distance between you and them is actually going to blow out further. But uh, I think the lead three, the lead trio, are going to be very excited to see that they've got that substantial break and uh, the medal decided is going to be amongst these three. We haven't really seen any attacks on the uphill no. part that we thought we might see. Um, and I guess we haven't necessarily seen an attack from the women either other than Van Coburn has fallen off. We don't know whether the little spurt was put on to get away, but it certainly seemed like the gap opened up very quickly. It does seem to have ended up, opened up quickly. Um, I think Flora would have put the pressure on. That's the way she likes to, to ride a, a triathlon course, especially in a hilly technical section. And um, I think even now we're seeing um, Eric is actually sitting on the front a little bit more. He's, mm. he's wanting to get through this section quickly and to take a little bit of the sting out of the, uh, the faster runners uh, before they hit the run. That tunnel back there marked the turn away from the, the return leg, I guess, and now they head through the villages, the men, while our two leaders in the women's hit the top of Kianling Mountain. That is Flora Duffy of Bermuda and Lucy Hall of Great Britain. So they're going to be able to see how the damage they've done to third place. Mm. And um, I think Lucy Hall will be very pleased to see that. She'll, she'll want a little bit of a buffer going into the run. And I think that everyone will want a little bit of a buffer uh, before non Stanford starts running because she's going to be the strongest runner in the field. All right, there's a fair bit of a gap back now to Natalie Van Coburn, who found the trip up the mountain quite difficult let's see if she can get a bit more pace in her legs back down but as you say she's in no man's land and losing all it's, well it's been a long season too mm. it's towards the end of the year uh, natalie's been racing all year she's been uh, probably in the last month of racing and uh, her legs are probably cooked yeah, whereas Duffy, who's had that injury, as you said, and Lucy Hall was injured up until escape from Alcatraz in June, so she has had a late season this season as well. Finished third in Beijing, Lucy Hall, last year, so she's been here before, and the bike leg, un unlike the swim leg, is, is very similar to what it was last year as well. And Lagerstrom, another who is showing his experience around this course as they head back into Garden Expo Park, bumping over the cobblestones, and they're going to head into transition very, very soon. I think Sam Ward's been uh, quite sneaky sitting on the back there. He's uh, probably planning to have nice fresh legs going into the run and he, we haven't seen him on the front much at all. He might just be a victim of when we get to see them, but let's just say that he hasn't been on the front too much. As out into the village, just had the women and into transition come the men. Lagerstrom in the middle from America on the right. Sam Ward of New Zealand and on the left, Mario Mola of Spain. And there is absolute daylight between them and the rest and they bump over the cobblestones. You can see Mola's already into his fluid running style, running with the bike nice and easily. Um, he'll be looking to clear out, I think. Um, tough run though, 5k mark, they've got a 300 steps to, to endure. So mm. it's, um, you can't go out too hard on this run, otherwise you're going to be creeping for the second half. All right, Ward with his shoes on quite quickly. Looks like he's going to get out first. Mola still hasn't taken the helmet off and Ward is out of transition and makes the turn. It's a very fast transition by Ward. There is Lagerstrom and there is Mola flipping on the race belts. And if I'm not mistaken, where's, where's Sam Ward's race belt? We'll get back to that in just a second. Ward, 31 seconds through uh, transition there. 
but 58, 56, 58, 57, 58, 58. So there was nothing between them on the bike. Five minutes back to Hurley and Ward. And Malloy as well, a little bit further back. And then Ivanov Lowe and Zhu Fang at the back end. And here comes Sam Ward. Oh, he has no. indeed forgotten the race belt. We didn't see it. And he's going to have to run... Oh, well, he probably what he got 250 meters. Yeah, that's torched his run. Um, I, I don't even know why you'd have a race belt. You'd have it under your wetsuit, so you don't have to worry about things like this. Well, the others remembered it, but I guess when the heart rate's as high as it is, little mistakes will cost you. So a race in two, maybe now for the men and the women. Yes, I think uh, Sam Ward. Well, I mean, he can still run the guys down, but uh, that would really throw you if you've uh, what 200 meters into the start of the run. Mm, I think they've got a fair buffer back to the chasing pack, but it's going to be a tough old 10Ks ruining that it mistake is. for Sam Ward as into transition comes Lucy Hall on the right from Great Britain. Third here last year, looking for at least a second, hopefully a win, but she's up against Flora Duffy, who is the most accomplished female triathlete of the, far, of the past five years, at least on the Olympic distance circuit. And probably overall, as she racks her... Beautiful S Works bike. You'd have to say Flora's the favourite in this uh, position. She's a she's a strong runner. She's a solid runner, and uh, Lucy Hall isn't known for her running. So it uh, it would be quite interesting to see how non Stanford goes mm. after her fast bike we're yeah. seeing on the screen there. Yeah, she was third overall. We'll take a break right now. We'll be back with the run leg with the Beijing International Triathlon. Welcome back to the Beijing International Triathlon. Now in its eighth year, this event draws crowds from all over Asia, keen to meet the world's best athletes and share the course with them over the weekend. One of the features is the pre-race signing session at the official hotel, which is a real highlight for the athletes as well as the fans, as is the Friday night official welcome. And this is a true cultural experience and extends to racing all across the two days. A cultural showcase of music and entertainment and of course a chance to fuel up for the racing and that is very important as well in the spectacular surrounds of Garden Expo Park. It is time soon though to get back to the racing. Our pros are about to head out on the final leg. Ten tough kilometres between them and victory here in Beijing. Emma, you'll take us through this run course. It's a very interesting one, entirely within Garden Expo Park, which was built in 2013, entirely from urban waste, and it's got a bit of everything. Yeah, looking at the visuals, that's the flat section of the start of the run course. And then we're at 5K, we head up 280 steps up to a temple, and then we make our way back down the hill, and at 8K, it widens out again for a fast, flat finish. A bit of everything, one of the most unique courses in triathlon. I think the most iconic thing about this race is, is the run. Um, you have the 280 stairs uh, on the run up to the, the temple. You run a, a loop around the temple and come back down. So it definitely adds another element to the race. And um, I think it'll be interesting to see who can pace themselves up the steps and not fall down on the way back down. Once you reach the, the stairs, you've had like a long day in your legs already and, and you're not as fresh as uh, we would be we will be in the morning. So um, yeah, having that in mind, I feel like we have to learn a little bit from the uh, trail runners and see how they approach those sections where it's, it is really hard to, to run and try to learn from that. It's incredible, like the, with the incorporating the steps uh, during the run, that's just like no other race. Like there's no other race that's like this. Um, so I think that the run for me is like the, the most inspirational part of the course um, and also like I always look forward to it as well even though it's the hardest part it's also the the most exciting I think. I've gotten more and more timid as I've gotten older I'm 30 now um, but typically I like to just leap full flights if I can because the stairs are so small you can't get your foot on them unless you're sideways so sometimes if there's just four, five or six stairs and you can just launch the whole thing. I mean, as long as you don't fall on your face, you can pick up some time that way. It will be interesting to see how they attack the stairs, but that is about four kilometers away as Mario Mola passes the one kilometer mark and he's already on his own. He is, he's just had a little check over the shoulder, but uh, I think he'd be very comfortable in the position he's at. He'd, uh, I think he'd be wanting to make a little bit of a break, um, have a bit of a buffer before he heads into the stairs. And uh, I think from looking at that is quite a big buffer. Yeah, he's already got a 
nice big buffer. And Lucy Hall has somewhat lost touch with Flora Duffy. You can see her up there in the distance. We know Duffy's a fantastic runner. We know that Hall is not renowned for a run because she's she's very, very good in the water. So we, we kind of focus more on that. But Duffy and Mola, both ITU world champions. This a drafting race like they have in the ITU and the World Triathlon Series. And the cream is rising to the top. Yeah, and I think you can tell um, a when someone's running well they're going to spend as little time as possible on the ground and um, you can see the leg turnover of Duffy in the distance or you well, can, can see, see right now here. you can see that she's nice and light on her feet she's got a good cadence going and same as Mola and she's she's clearing out yeah she spent her summer in Boulder Colorado and long training blocks and not a lot of racing and we're seeing that now as Eric Lagerstrom who won here four years ago is all alone in second position as is Lucy Hall and you can see even in that amount of time they're still only a couple of kilometres into the run and Flora Duffy is putting plenty into Hall. Well, Lagerstrom is uh, trying to make sure that he stays ahead of uh, Sam Ward and then we've got Non Stanford who is going to storm through the field, just overtaken yeah. Natalie and uh, she's going to be trying to chase down Lucy Hall. So Lucy just needs to minimise the damage and go as fast as she can. Well, Stanford has had a barnstorming transition and start of the run as Mario Mola heads up the stairs and this is something that he has not experienced before and he's taking them two by two. We'll see if he can sustain that all the I way know, up is because it two it's a by long way. I'd, I'd like to work out whether it's two by two or take every step it's uh, quite a difficult one or walk which <laughs> i don't think i'd ever say that mario Mola's walking during a race but he's, he's, he's found the stairs tough going they all do everyone's pretty much in the same boat that'd be very hard so hard and and, and as you say look at that that turnover and the, the the running cadence from flora duffy just looks so comfortable and, and as i said she's been training in colorado and, and not racing much and that's really helping her at the back end of this race and Maybe Lagerstrom could be the man who manages to run all the way up the stairs this year. It'd be very difficult. Your calves would burn. Um, I don't think it would be so much the quads until you hit the down section. That, that's when your quads burn, but on the way up, your calves would be burning. But uh, Flora's... Lucy Hall's disappeared. She has. Flora's looking good. This is, this is the, the questionable area of her race at the moment because of her big, prolonged injury time. And Eric's still running. He's still managing. Well, he's done this so many times before, he would have worked it into his race plan a little bit more as Lucy Hall has lost contact completely with Flora Duffy. And so now it's non-Stanford behind Hall. I think there's a, a fairly big gap back there though. So she's got plenty of buffer as Sam Ward comes to the stairs. And we haven't really checked in on Ward since he had his uh, error oh, there. He'd be kicking himself. Yeah, prior to the break where he uh, forgot his race belt. He's got it on now. And there is the beautiful temple at the top of the run course. And there is Mario Mola who looks like he's just asking the question to make sure he's going the right way. <laughs> We've seen all sorts of things happen here in Beijing in past years. But he'll come back down the stairs soon and he'll get to see again where everyone else is as Eric Lagerstrom heads past the same Eric's temple. running well. He's um, not known for his running, but he's, he's running well. He's not too far behind uh, Mola. And uh, like Flora's having a nice little cadence, I think Eric's running really efficiently. Down the stairs comes Mola, and he's taking them two by two again. He might change here. Yeah, he's gone to one because, as Eric said in that grab, they're very narrow stairs. You can see his toes hanging over the stairs, and a, a, just a little mistake will have big consequences, and you don't want to be taking difficult, this full down the stairs. Difficult in those shoes, too, because they tip you forward. And to come downstairs, you've got to sort of lean back. So uh, the With shoes are made... With your jelly legs as well. Well, yeah, the, the shoes are made to run fast, not run downstairs. Well, and Eric, Eric's, Eric's not worried going about for it. it. Yeah, he, he mentioned he'd do the little crab shuffle and he's he's that's doing that, good. turning his feet sideways. Oh, wow, that's that's brave. quite a, that's very brave. Quite a good technique there. How would you do this? Yeah. I don't Depends know. what position in the race you're in, you would think. I, if you have I, a buffer, I just think you take looking, it one by one. Looking down like that would be very easy to trip. It would indeed, as Lagerstrom heads down and Flora Duffy heads up, leading our women. And Lagerstrom has a look around. And another look. And another look there, <laughs> and he doesn't see anyone behind him just yet. Here is Lucy Hall, wearing the same style runners as Mola, so it'll be interesting to see how she does it. Very popular, those shoes in triathlon at the moment. She's sort of a good running style as Duffy slows to a walk up the top of the stairs. Because they come in sections too, it's hard to get a rhythm on those stairs. I did run up them once. Did you? It's research. Uh, yeah, once I, is enough, once well, is enough. I haven't been up them, but uh, I think it's a little bit unfair that they've got a camera halfway up those uh, hills. <laughs> That's exactly why it's there. Exactly why it's there. 
There is Sam Ward coming down, still in third position and comfortable in third position as Lucy Hall heads up. And he's taken them well, Ward. Now he looks behind and he's looking for the likes of his brother Liam and Keegan Hurley of the USA. Joe Malloy back there as well. All chasing, but at the front and extending his lead and continuing to do so is Mario Mola. And he's got that gait that's so familiar to those who follow triathlon and just eats up the kilometres. Just very smooth, very um, controlled. He never seems to be in a panic, doesn't even seem to be hurting. So um, I think he's very much under control. And if you can use the word comfortable in triathlon, that's what he looks right now. He's just keeping it all on the inside, as is Flora Duffy, and she heads through the high point of this run course. And she she does look comfortable in that. She's got a nice still head, her shoulders back. She seems she doesn't seem hunched over at all. She seems well within her capabilities at the moment. She does, and she's well clear. So that's um, exactly where she likes to be in a race. Keegan Hurley in fourth position. There is Non Stanford, who has left Natalie Van Coven in behind and is comfortably looking to wrap up third position and make it. Two athletes from the British Isles in the top three. So non Stamp is probably in the toughest position right now. She's got to uh, run up these 280 steps and try and make an impact on the Lucy Hall, who we see on the screen now. Yeah, she's actually a good K or two ahead, Lucy Hall. There's plenty of up and down once you go past those steps before you get past the temple, and that's where she is right now. Stanford, of course, 2013 world champion and an Olympian and former under-23 world champion as well. You can just see how hot the pace is when someone of those, with that resume is, is that far back. And Mario Mola, on the other hand, world number two at the moment, is turning into the finishing shoot and he will be your winner of the Beijing International Triathlon for 2019. I think he'd be, yeah. Uh... Very comfortable win indeed. Congratulations to Mario Mola. Obviously lost the world number one ranking this year, but it'll be a nice way to round out things for Mola. His partner, Carolina Rutier, is still out on course and finding the going somewhat tougher. There's no doubt about that as Flora Duffy puts on a bit of a clinic. And if, she, if we were wondering where her form was at after her layoff and heading into Tokyo 2020, well, we can wonder no more. And I also think, you know, she's had a foot injury and it's been the top of the foot that's been very sore. She's handled those steps really well. So uh, she's, she'd be very pleased with her form today. Eric Lagerstrom, first athlete to go back to back, escape from Alcatraz and then Beijing Triathlon. He did that in 2015. He concentrates more on 70.3 racing now, which is half Ironman. But he picks up second position once again. So a really good weekend out for Eric Lagerstrom, who enjoys this race very much. Didn't have as good of a race last year. So he is back on the podium. And Lucy Hall looking to do the same thing as well. Finished third last year, looking for second this year. And Sam Ward, what a 10 kilometers for Sam Ward. Uh, Sam would be uh, ruining the, the time that he forgot to put on his number belt. But uh, great, great run. He's still, still got on the podium. He's got a smile, but that's what he'll be saying right now. I don't know what happened. I just forgot it. And here are the final standings for the men's for 2019 in Beijing. It was a good over a minute from Mola to Lagerstrom. That just shows you how good it was on the run. Sam Ward, Keegan Hurley, Joe Malloy, the two Americans round out the top five from Liv Ward, even off low, and Zhu Fang of China. It is my first time winning here in Beijing, so I'm very excited. It's been a great race with an unbelievable venue. Uh, everyone, the crowds were very supportive today, so I'm very happy uh, to have delivered a good race for everyone who came here and, and support us. So yeah, thank you. A world champ and now a winner in Beijing, and it looks like we're going to have another one in the women's. Flora Duffy taking another step on the comeback trail. She's even got time to use the rubbish bin for the, uh, the cup she just used. So she's well clear. <laughs> Have you ever done that before? <laughs> Throwing it in on the way past? That's uh, when you know you're okay. You do. If, um, if you've got a buffer, you can do that. But um, most of the time you run through aid stations, there's a little bit more of a panic. So Lucy's, she's consolidated second, but... Uh, she has, but no one can beat Flora Duffy, who has added a race win to her comeback at the back end of 2019, a World Cup podium, and now a win in Beijing on her first trip here. She'd be very pleased with that. Non-Stanford has run herself into third place. Good solid run. 
Yeah, you, you did call that at the uh, at the start of this race. If she could get through the swim in decent position, she's run away from Carolina Routier. She's run past Natalie Van Coven, and she doesn't have enough in the tank to get to Lucy Hall, who whose race was set up by just hanging on to the wheel of Flora Duffy and doing her turn at the front on the bike, getting rid of Nat Van Coven, and, and she will better her result from last year with a second place in Beijing. Congratulations to Lucy Hall, who's had a good second half of the year. And she just said, I'm sorry, maybe for not doing as much work after they had that discussion. Oh, maybe. It's very rare that you apologise crossing the line. I'm not sure that, what She's that was for. She's still got uh, second place. And but he's not on Stanford. Yeah, How good was that run? Really, really good. be interesting to see the splits. Well, it looks like she had a very strong bike as well. So, uh, non Stanford, probably disadvantaged by the small field in the swim and uh, had that little bit of a, a gap on the bike, but she's really run well, run through the field and got herself into third. Yeah, she's had a very good year non-Stanford after a couple of lean ones. Flora Duffy, 204.55 in the end, and that's 158 ahead of Hall with all that damage done on the run. Stanford, 208.44, 90 seconds ahead of Nat Van Coven, and Routier finally going tough to finish over 10 minutes back. It's exciting. It's my first race, first win on my comeback from injury. Um, it's definitely hard to come back from to racing after such a long period off, especially coming back off an injury. Um, it's just, yeah, not quite at full fitness, learning to race again to get that intensity um, in me. Um, so yeah, it's extremely hard, but thoroughly enjoyed it, and this is a nice step um, step back. So our winners have been crowned for another year. Mario Mola winning from Eric Lagerstrom and Sam Ward. And Flora Duffy too good for Lucy Hall and Non Stanford. The cream rising to the top. And no surprise, ITU athletes winning with the drafting rule change. A quality international professional field for this destination race. What a fantastic weekend, Emma. Great weekend of racing. Great weekend to uh, watch the key athletes from triathlon dominate. And uh, I'm very much looking forward to Beijing International 2020. So am I, Emma. So am I. We hope to see you back once again. Thank you very much for your commentary across the course of the weekend. The winners have been crowned for another year. Five world titles between them. Very worthy winners and plenty of smiles in the background as well. It really is a great week for the athletes here in Beijing. Plenty of smiles, plenty of fan support for both our pros and our amateurs. The culmination of a really great week here in Feng Tai in southwestern Beijing and some perfect weather put on once again. Thank you very much to the government of Feng Tai, to Beijing Riverside Hotel, the official hotel of the Beijing International Triathlon, and to BAIC Motor Group ORV. That wraps us up from Beijing for the 2019 Beijing International Triathlon.